So this quarterback class is going to be kind of nuts. This has been a very up and a very, very, very down year for a lot of quarterback prospects. But here we are. I'm going to give you my top 10 quarterbacks in the 2022 NFL draft class. Keep in mind, there's going to be some prospects I don't include, but I'll get into that in a minute. But what's crack lacking? It's your boy, Broshmo. Just in case you did not know, so go ahead, become a bro and subscribe. Leave that thumbs up up if you enjoy the content as always let me know what you think in the comment section below let me know who you think maybe should have been included or what are some of your thoughts on some of these guys if you want to support the channel best way support channel get some of that fine merch i'll leave a i'll leave a link to the teespring store in the description but look at that i'm, I'm out here supporting my favorite player brennan cox baby or jabril cox from last year got that i love cox <laughs> hoodie up in the shop also got mock the mock merch if you want to check that out i'm adding more stuff as we go so if, again if you want to support the channel it's the best way to do so let's go ahead let's get into the guys i'm not including on this list that i really believe are coming back here's a list of them. i'm not going to really go into them one by one uh these guys either they've been hurt this year uh, much like Phil Dracovic, uh, JT Daniels has been hurt, uh, or they just haven't played well, which is actually a good majority of them, as you see with like uh, Jaden Daniels and such. Uh, Will Levis is kind of like a, um, I just, I want a bigger sample size on him. So he's got another year of eligibility. He's kind of been up and down in some cases this year, or guys that I think are going to transfer, like Spencer Rattler, let's be honest. Probably going to transfer. Good chance he does. I uh, don't see him coming out in this class. I don't see how he can come out in this class. Uh, who else may transfer here? I think Grayson McCall has to transfer. I uh, just think he needs to make a, he needs to be more mainstream. Maybe go to a power five school just because the offense that they run there is just not, and it just doesn't translate to the NFL. He needs to showcase his talents on preferably another power power five school i think would really help out his stock so and i think he's only a redshirt sophomore let's go ahead get in the list starting at 10 jake hayner at fresno state this cat is a former washington prospect uh or recruit i should say and he's really come on this season had a strong showing at the beginning of the year versus yukon i thought he looked relatively good against oregon despite all the havoc that defensive line was causing him but this guy's got a big arm. He's got arm talent. He's got arm talent. I really like this guy's gutsy, his uh, his moxie, his his uh, just you just tell this guy's been playing beat up for uh, for the most part the last like it feels like month or so. But he's there and playing, trying to lead his squad. The pocket poise is real good. He doesn't real like. He handles pressure well. He can work outside of structure. Size is going to be probably one of the biggest concerns. That's sub 200. He's 6'1". Uh, that's smaller than Zach Wilson, and that, that was a big criticism with size for Zach Wilson at the next level. I think this guy, he has trouble diagnosing defenses. Um, as you can see, like he's he just has trouble seeing coverage. You know, He's not catching guys in the middle. That's why his... Uh, he's got like 10 over or 10 um, turnover worthy plays this year. Uh, he had eight the year before, but thrown with anticipation. He's a bit late on some throws, but the arm talents there for him to be a late day three pro uh, project. I like that. Hayner's definitely been a big riser this year. Probably not a lot of people considered him draftable last year. On number nine. Brennan Armstrong, and Brennan Armstrong's got another year of eligibility. He could very well come back, which he might. I, I'm not positive if he gets a senior bowl or not. The senior bowl is kind of weird this year because a lot of people are working with an extra year of eligibility. It's going to be interesting how that works out. I mean, this is technically his fourth season, so he's probably a Richard junior. They might give it to him. So I don't know. We'll see how that all works out. But this guy's got an amazing deep ball. The leadership's there, man. He this is a he's led this Virginia Tech team or Virginia Tech Virginia team 
to a solid record despite the lack of talent around him. Very poised under pressure. Outside of the pocket, he's been very good. Handles the blitz well. Biggest knock on this guy for me is his mechanics overall not great and mainly it's his release he's got this little short arm release and it's i don't know how he chucks the ball so far down the field with this release but he does the decision making could be a bit better but i mean the last two seasons he's put up like 40 what 47 big time throws to his 24 turnover worthy throws so he's putting up double the big time throws as he is the turnover worthy throws and if i mean if we look i could tell i i could tell you from the get-go just from watching him i bet you a lot of this is downfield uh this season yeah i mean yeah i mean some of them co comes over the middle of the field and i bet you that's a middle like the middle middle of the field so they're like intermediate yeah, a lot of it's in the middle of the field. So I mean, I mean, typically when you get to the next level, it, it's for guys like this. It's they're just missing safeties coming under, or uh, they they're missing safeties safeties over the top, or they're missing linebackers underneath. But he's very. I'll say this: this dude's very encouraging in terms of just being a prospect. He's got good size, 6'2", 215. And the dude just works very well under pressure. He is elevating this squad. You get you get his release kind of figured out. Work on that. Like this guy could be really good long term. Again, could end up coming back. I just felt the need to include him just because uh, the the way this quarterback class is shaping out, it's not looking to be good. <laughs> I know this is very encouraging for the rest of the list. Uh, number eight, I got Kadan Slovis, man, uh, at a USC. And I know he's got another year of eligibility, but he's got, what is it, Jackson uh, Dart right there on his heels, man. I feel like Slovis is one real bad game away from just being benched. And, you know, I don't think anything's going to change if he, even if he sticks around and gets one more year of starting. He's just the same guy we've seen since his freshman season. Pinpoint accuracy, very poised in the pocket. Uh, uh Good. He's got some nice touch on uh, his passes. Uh, nice, <laughs> nice touch on his balls, I suppose. Uh, but in terms of the pocket poise, like this year, like I, I know this guy's poised in the pocket. He's good at maneuvering the pocket. Uh, I could really tell you, man, that right side of the uh, lines really let him down this year as he's really taken some pressure to the face. Like he'll stick in the pocket and make throws. Uh, but the decision making has always been up and down for him man it's always been up and down it's got nine touchdowns and six picks this season uh 10 turnover worthy plays the guy doesn't have great arm strength a uh, bit of a noodle for an arm that's why i got an early day three because you can appreciate a quarterback that's pretty accurate um and just yeah i mean like honestly he's kind of matt barkley in himself you know but so it's he, he's not a bad prospect in this class on day three i wouldn't touch him any earlier than that if we're gonna be honest and then here comes this is where i become a lightning rod i hate desmond ritter at number seven i got a projected as a third round more late third round to like early day three because we know the guy's got a huge arm he's a dual threat like we know he's got good mobility. He's got prototypical size at 6'4, 215. But the decision making is not always great. It's been better this year, but it's not always great. He's coming off a really bad game against Navy where you really saw just how inaccurate he can be. Like his ball placement isn't great. And I've been saying this all year, man. Accuracy is his biggest downfall. It really is. And we saw that in the Navy game. Uh, he's been working out of a very simplistic scheme his whole career. It's been a little less RPO heavy, but they've been asking him to make quick reads, like two to three step drop backs, like, and and just gun it. Uh, I will say, I mean, it, it's impressive that he can make. Uh, he's probably only going through one or two decisions at that point, but like for me, he's just a high end developmental prospect. I don't see him as this first round prospect. I'm not going to take a chance on him in the first round. Yes, this season, it's been better than years before, but 
in my opinion, not that much better. And some people, I, I've seen some people be like, well, he's elevated this Cincinnati team. This is a good Cincinnati team. You're telling me he's probably got the best talent of any group of five team. Likely, most likely. I'm sure there's probably some one case out here. Like someone's going to say UTSA. UTSA does got a banger team though. But he's working with almost power five talent around him. Almost. I'm talking like low end power five. <laughs> but yeah, Ritter, man, he's just not a guy I'm not behind. Maybe that changes. I doubt it. Uh, just the accuracy has been a big issue for me. And then number six, this might be a hot take too. I have Kenny Pickett. I got him as a midday two prospect. Uh, I like this guy's arm, man. Rubber band arm, very elastic. And I've been talking about Pickett for a while. Um, I, I Maybe as soon as like the 2020 draft, maybe I was talking about Pickett. Or I know I was definitely talking about it last year. I was real surprised that he decided to come back. Though it may have been one of the best decisions he could have ever made. Like this year has been amazing for him. And I know a lot of people will be like, this guy's a first round talent. I don't think he's got that type of arm talent, man. A lot of people are going to criticize, like, allegedly he's got like eight inch hands, which be like, well, Joe Burrow had, had small hands. Yeah. His were like nine inches, whole, in, like whole, much bigger, much bigger. And even then his were considered small, but, um, he doesn't have, I, I would say elite arm talent, like I think he, he's got a strong arm, I'd say above average in terms of his arm strength. Uh, but his decision making has been phenomenal this year. Uh, I, re I was saying, this was before the Virginia Tech game, uh, maybe even before the Georgia Tech game. Maybe it was actually during the Georgia Tech game. I was like, let's see, because the schedule gets a lot harder from here. Virginia Tech, good defense, tore it apart. I wouldn't say did anything like outstanding, but I thought he did a good job against uh, Virginia Tech. Uh, Clemson, though, man, molly whopped that squad. To be fair, I was more disappointed in Clemson. Like, that team couldn't stop anything Pittsburgh was doing. Like, the, Pittsburgh was running all over them. But Kenny Pickett kept the ball out of harm's way, did enough to get the job done. Clemson couldn't even come close. Um, you, I, I list ball placement here as a weakness. Because his accuracy is good, don't get me wrong. But I feel like at times, and this I thought this was pretty apparent in the Clemson game, that rather than throwing to a spot, he's throwing to the receiver. Like There was this one close to the red zone on the sideline where his receiver was kind of, I think it was an out route, and he kind of like throws it behind his receiver, still out, of, outside, uh, out from where the defender could get it. But I mean that that's somewhere where you want he wanted to throw more towards the sideline. I feel like his ball placement could be better in some cases, but still, this guy's got a good arm. Uh, I think he's definitely he's more than just a I would say high end backup. I think this guy could be a starter in the NFL, but he, I don't think he's got first round talent in terms of his arm. Because I mean, in the first round, you're not looking for guys that could be solid starters. You're looking for guys you think could be like maybe at the top 12 to 10 at, at that position. But yeah, Kenny Pickett is a wonderful prospect. Don't get me wrong. Don't think I hate him because I actually really like him. Uh, Tanner McKee is another guy I really think could come back and maybe end up be quarterback one in 2023. The biggest thing is he's got Davis Mills sample size. This guy was on a mission trip for two years. Uh, last year it came back was the backup to Davis Mills. This year is his first taste of being a starter, and he's looked great. Has he had some bad games? Sure. Uh, Arizona State playing from behind. He got a little careless with the football, but you're playing from behind. He was there. He was trying to play catch up, and they weren't weren't able to come back. I would I would say really Arizona State's his one bad game on tape, just because. I mean, they were set so far behind already. It was like, you're trying to play catch up. You're trying, he's trying to put his team in a position to win. I mean, he had five big time throws during that game because he was having to sling the ball to try to bring his squad back. So I, for me, that was an is for is what it is type of game. It didn't really hurt his stock for me. I've been really impressed with him just throughout 
this whole season. The Oregon game, he was very good. The UCLA game, he was exceptional. Um, I, I, and again, I threw force in the ball, but again, I feel like the Arizona State game was just kind of a sample of him forcing the ball. Outside of that, this guy, he, he can attack the field at all levels, dude. He's got great pocket poise. He's much more mobile than Davis Mills could, I could think ever could be, but the arm talent's there, man. This guy's got a good arm. He's got a good arm. He's very accurate, good ball placement. That's why I got him listed here as a second rounder, uh, just because the sample size is so small. We You want to see more from him. But I think there's a good chance he might come out in this class because it's such a weak class, I could see him rising even further than he already has. Keep in mind, it's not like the Stanford squad has a lot of talent on it. I mean, it's got talent, but a lot of it's very young. Uh, they're very like they're very very much so developing the squad so yeah i love me tanner mckee on to four carson strong you'd be like i can't believe you list him as a second rounder it's like he's fringe first for me um i think he's shown the biggest thing i wanted to see was better pocket poise from him because the guy's not mobile he's never going to be mobile but i want to see him not skirt out the pocket at the at the sign of pressure i don't want to see him skirt out the pocket when he just thinks there's pressure and no pressure to be found that was something in 2020 that he was doing he, it was very carson wentz it was very um um jacob Eason of him where you're feeling pressure that's not even there stay in the pocket especially if it's clean and make throws because this guy's got a cannon for an arm he probably has the quickest release in this class you love his size and the guy makes big time throws all the time, man. He he has been outstandingly good, especially in 2019 or 2020, and we're seeing it again in 2021. Good case. He I think there there could be a good case that he even elevates his stock further. I just don't think he is on par with the next three guys. Uh, but it's real close. It's real close. So Sam Howe, he is number three. But I would really say he, he's pretty close to the other two prospects. If you don't know who they are, you, you probably know who they are. Let's be serious. You probably know who they are. But Sam Howman's got a cannon for an arm. He is so good with the deep ball. Like he puts a lot of touch on the football. The guy's got the arm talent. Uh, he's very experienced. I think he's a very underrated athlete. I mean, shoot. Let's see what he's done rushing this year, man. He's put on a bit of a clinic. This year is a runner. Yeah, the dude's got sign this the mark of the beast. He's got 666 yards rushing. Uh, seven fumbles though, a bit concerning. Not really. You're a quarterback. You're not expected to rush. I don't think he's gonna be. Um, I don't think he's gonna be an exceptional. Like I don't think he's a guy that can win on it like win with his feet at the nfl level i think he's a guy i think he could extend plays with his feet and make the pick up the occasional first down with his feet but the, it's this guy's got a great arm man i know he's gonna be give, people are giving him a lot of crap because he hasn't done well a lot of people were losing losing their freaking mind after the virginia tech game but let's be real he lost a lot of talent this tar hill team Lost talent everywhere last year to the draft. His offensive line is playing terrible. His defense is terrible. His receivers, his playmakers outside of Josh Downs, terrible. Yeah, he's forcing throws kind of because he has to. Not like last year where he had the luxury to force throws because he had such great weapons but he kind of has to i like this year that he can't just stick to one read because he plays in a very simplistic a very rpo heavy scheme he can't stick to one read you see him going through progressions because he's actively actively trying to find someone who is open that even means going to his checkdowns he's gone to his checkdowns a lot more i think this season but still, this guy's average depth of target has been over 10 yards his whole career. He likes to attack the ball deep or attack the defense deep because guess what? He can do that. He's got that type of arm. He could easily be some team's like first quarterback on their board. He's good. Quit crapping on Sam Howe. He doesn't deserve it. 
<laughs> All right. Uh, number two, I got I got Matt Corral. Uh, size is going to be an issue. Uh, 6'1", 205. He's about 10 pounds lighter than Zach Wilson and like an inch or two shorter. I think an inch shorter. So, so for some teams, size is going to be a concern. I don't think so. Not It's not an issue for me. Uh, but this guy's got a pretty deep ball. He is, he's a slinger, if you couldn't tell last season. You can definitely tell this year. 15 touchdowns and one interception. Uh, he's really cleaned up. You, we haven't seen one of those four to six interception games this year. He's been really good. You could go back to the Alabama game and be like, oh, he did nothing against Alabama. He didn't put the ball in harm's way. But to be fair, he was given no time to throw. But he made sure that he could he could keep his squad in the game by not making costly throws. Yes, I kind of wish he would take more shots in that game. But to be fair, man, it's not like his receivers are giving him great separation. Uh, this guy's an escape artist. I don't, much like Hal, where I was talking about, I don't think he's a guy that's going to like be constantly picking up yards with his feet. But I think he's a guy that could extend the play and occasionally get first downs. Uh, if he has to run into the football, we've seen great vision from him both uh, both this year and last. Uh, I kind of worry about the zip on his arm. Uh, not so much like oh lack of arm strength, but like kind of uh, like underneath and uh, under and in the intermediate, he kind I feel like he kind of struggles to make some tight window throws. But this is kind of nitpicking at this point. Um, the guy's a good prospect. I got him listed as a top 20. And you probably already know Malik Willis. He's my top quarterback prospect. You'd be like, Malik Willis had terrible games against Middle Tennessee and Louisiana and Monroe. And it's like, yeah, he did. But he's number one because this guy's ceiling is ridiculous. He's got a rocket for an arm. He's very elusive, mobile. There's no one touching him in terms of being uh, what he can do on the ground. I mean, this season, it's been ridiculous. Let's take a look real quick uh because i didn't write it down here we go he has 61 carries for 818 yards nine touchdowns only two fumbles so at me matt corral uh desmond Ritter. i know a lot of people maybe be like well Ritter's right up there with him uh no he's not no, Ritter's not touching willis in terms of what he, willis can do on his feet like willis has 51 force miss tackles on 61 Russian attempts. That's kind of ridiculous. Uh, and uh, Ritter, uh, Ritter was another guy with uh, a lot of fumbles. So, yeah. Guys, you typically probably don't want to take the... Like, take the... Or be ball carriers. But, listen. His worst games were those two games. He came back, had a really... Had a solid game against North Texas. This guy... I... His he's really cleaned up his mechanics. He can make off-platform throws and retain and like still put good mustard on the football. He, he could throw at different angles with his arm. Um, the decision making, yeah, you worry about it. Those two games were really kind of the outliers this season, but it was something in the past you kind of worry about. Like his decision making wasn't so good. It's been much better this year. I think he's a lot more accurate, a lot, uh, and has better ball placement this year because he's cleaned up the footwork. It's not nearly as sloppy. He he um he's not just throwing off his back foot even when both feet are set. That uh, that was um something I like noticed in twenty uh twenty. It's like you got both fit uh both feet were set, but this guy's still like leaning so far back on his back foot. I don't know what you're doing, but um now this guy's got an incredibly high ceiling. Is my is he ready to play from the get go? Probably not. But he's got a good ceiling. Like him and Trey Lance, a lot of people point out them maybe as similar prospects. I would say Willis has a better pedigree, being a former Auburn recruit, losing out to Bo Nix. Woof. Uh, that, if anything, that's probably the biggest knock on Willis. But uh, I, I'm not gonna lie to y'all, man. I part of me kind of wants to give the edge. I would say give the edge to Willis over Lance. It's real close. Um, I'm trying to think of another prospect that would probably be a better comp for willis um just one's not i'm not great at giving out comps i don't really like comps anyway but willis is a great i got him listed a top 20 prospect there's no shirt there's no guy that's like surefire number one overall pick in this class 
But there are some guys I'd be willing to take shots on just because, like, with Willis, the upside's great. With Hal, the upside's great. With Corral, the, uh, you just love his gunslinger mentality. You love, his, you love that he's cleaned up so much as a decision maker this year. So there's some guys, even Carson Strong, you love the guy's cannon. You love how he throws the ball deep. Tanner, Tanner McKee, there's a, there's a lot to like about him in terms of what he can be in the NFL. Like, He's a far better prospect than Davis Mills. And Davis Mills was getting all this hype right before we got into the draft. Uh, even Kenny Pickett, man. I think that cat could be a solid NFL starter. Like, this is a good class. It's not a great class, but it's not a all is lost type class. But let me know what you think in the comment section below. That's it for the video. Go ahead, do that YouTube theme. It's always much appreciated. Much obliged. And until next time, you be easy, my friends. Later.